Hello there. Hasn't it been a while, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome one and all to Blackout. And it's season two, which means I've got a lot of editing to do because for some reason it hasn't done the thing where it's, um, you know, supposed to change my settings. I don't want to see Mario Kart shut up. But for all intents and purposes, welcome everybody to the Blackout Racing League. It's a pleasure to have you along. Season number two. And what a time it is, honestly. After a crazy season one filled with catastrophe, chaos, and all the other things besides, we are back for more, which is all you really need to know, isn't it? Whilst I try and figure out, um, you know, how to change the title and whatnot, which would be great news for me, let me actually show you how we're working on Blackout Racing League. Let me turn this down a bit so I can actually concentrate. Because most of you will be wondering, if you are new viewers, for those of you that are new, welcome along. Um, most of you will be wondering, how does Blackout actually work in terms of points? Well, I'm only more than happy to oblige in that request. Here's how it works with a wide points distribution. Very simple, really. There are more points positions that are paid off. As Blackout so succinctly puts it, we give points down to and including 15th position to make things more competitive all the way down the pack. The points distribution is as follows, with first place getting 30 points all the way down to 15th place, which gets one solitary point. As you can see at the bottom, this is also in addition to three extra points for the driver with the fattest lap of the race. So good for them. Sprint format, those of you are probably wondering, what happens if, you, if there's a sprint race? How do the points work then? Well, it's very simple. It's, it's 8 to 1. It's, it's exactly the same as real life. And that's all you need to know. It's also important to note that on sprint weekends, it is not, it is not set by qualifying. It is in fact set by the championship order, but in reverse. Unless you're a reserve, in which case you get shunted to the back anyway. Oh no. That's all there really is to say in terms of points distribution wise. Formatting wise though, I can give you more. Indeed I can. Race settings and distances wise. The first race, generally speaking, of every single evening is 35% with the second one being a 50% affair. And again, that's all you really need to know. Qualifying is also always a short qualifying just to keep things moving. We have two races per evening, so you are never, you are never quite missing your saturation of F1 content, especially during this weekend where there's been a bit of a break before we head off to Qatar where Max Verstappen will, well, quite inevitably become a three-time world champion in that Leviathan of a car. But we have this championship where possibly Red Bull won't win a championship, in theory. I promise, mostly. Tell you what, though, if you, if you did watch season one, firstly, thank you for joining. And welcome back. Um, secondly, well, let me tell you. In season one, it was not Red Bull that won the championship. It was, in fact, Mercedes that won the championship in season one. And it was one of their drivers, Tanasi, who, quite frankly, steamrolled absolutely everybody. So, kudos to him. He'll be looking to defend his championship this season. The McLarens were very close to winning the Constructors last year. I take nothing away from their assault at top spot in the Constructors. Unfortunately, they did not quite make it in the end. Mercedes overthrew them towards the end of that season. Well, that wraps up, really, I believe, unless I'm drastically mistaken, everything that there is to know in terms of qualifying and race stipulations and whatnot, and also championship points stipulations, because they're on your screen right now. So... With that being said, we should be getting started in about 5 or 10 minutes, so I hope you will stay along with me for the crazy ride that is Blackout Season 2. Until then, I will let the music do the talking. So, once again, for those of you that are here, welcome along. I hope you enjoy all of the chaos that this evening has to offer. Our first race of the evening, a 35% race, will be in the desert. Who will be swept off their feet in the sandy suburbs? That's for you to find out. Until then, get ready, fasten your seatbelts, strap yourselves in, and get ready for the wild ride of the Bahrain Grand Prix.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, it is almost time for qualifying here in Bahrain. I have a couple of things to say because I got them wrong. I apologise. Uh, yeah, I've got nothing. I just apologise. Basically, look, here's, here's the calendar for season number two or season 14 of Blackout in its history. I am proud to be a part of this history. And before it goes without saying, thank you to Blackout for allowing me to commentate on this fantastic league racing series. I hope there's many, many fun moments yet to come from Season 2. I'm sure there will be. But here's the calendar, then. So we got Bahrain and Jeddah, obviously. And I must say also, they're both 35% racist today. So, I, I, in a way, the strategy element has gone out of the window. But at the same time, maybe it hasn't in some regard. It depends what the weather might do. Because Bahrain is a wet-to-dry race. They say when it rains, it pours in Bahrain. If it ever rains. And in this particular instance, it's raining absolute cats and dogs beyond belief. So there's that. And then you've got Baku and Qatar, Australia and Miami, Texas and Emily. You can see it for yourself. It's absolute utter chaos. But, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Bahrain. And as you can see, or rather as you don't normally see, it is absolutely pelting it down. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, can I just say, 18 people. I could literally cry. It's absolutely beautiful. There are tears flooding my eyes. The last time I was this emotional. Well, wouldn't you like to know? Anyway, let's get the map up. Let's get the lap data up. And let's see who blinks first. The answer is, it's a Red Bull. And it will possibly, quite possibly, beat Big Samuel, 229. There he is. The team that didn't perform as one would have expected in, in conjunction to real life, where they've absolutely romped the entire universe. In Blackout, that was not the case. In fact, it was Mercedes that did so. However, there have been some changes, as you can see. So let's go through those now. So... In the furthest garage up the field, in the Red Bull, we have Big Sam and Magico upgrades from the Alpine to the Red Bull, some might say. Although it's equal cars, so probably not. In the Ferrari garage, we have J-Lane and Maximus, formerly of Alpha Tauri and Williams, but the other way around. I'm really good at this, trust me. Slam, who used to be an Alpha Tauri driver, is in the Mercedes, and we welcome FRS Elliott to season 14 of Blackout. I'll call you Elliott just to keep it clear. Over in Alpine, then, we have Tag Marta, who's moved from the Haas team over to their second Alpine. Remains to be seen, although I imagine it's probably Vulcan. 
Over in McLaren, we have Milo and Buck20 still leading the lineup of that team. We then move on to Alfa Romeo as they're next on my watch list. Raiden and Daniel Gilligan are in that team. We then go to Williams where Giraffe, who is a reserve for this season, takes one of the spots. We then, on the other side of the coin, have Dirk in the other Williams. One of the first out on track, as he always is in these qualifying sessions, ready to make a mark in this blackout racing series. In Alfa Tauri then, well, it's the team that won the Constructors last time out. The Mercedes boys have pulled anchor and sailed on to better and warmer seas, possibly. Although if you saw in real life, you'd probably vomit everywhere if you made that decision. It's Buck57 and Thanasi, your championship winner in season one, have both moved over to the junior Red Bull outfit, what won't be called Alfa Tauri. So we'll just call them brand names. Hugo Boss, they're going to be called today. Of this Bahrain Grand Prix anyway. Any teams I have missed? Of course there are. The answer is Aston Martin. Stark has moved over to Aston Martin, as has Guardian. Guardian normally raced in the Red Bull last season. Stark was in the Ferrari last season. King Didi is in the Haas team. And there is no second Haas on the grid. Let's go with Big Sam then. On board with the Red Bull driver. As he cascades his way up the hill, breaks 100 metres on the intermediate tyres. It's a sight that makes me want to use bleach, but then I remember, yep, yeah, this is actually happening. Through sector one we go, then the tarmac with a nice sheen on it. The last time I saw something with that greater sheen was me after using some flash. Down into the right-hander we go then, pinching towards the apex as much as possible. You almost have to tiptoe in these conditions. Wet weather conditions, I mean, every qualifying lap is about confidence. But wet weather brings that up to a whole other plane of existence. Yellow flag in sector one. There's a Ferrari going slowly there. And another Ferrari going slowly. What on earth's gone on? Something horrendous has happened. The answer is a Mercedes and a Ferrari have come to wars. A Ferrari on softs for some reason. Maximus having a massive problem. And FRS Elliott doesn't even make it past the first corner of his first qualifying session. He's out of it. Oh, no, he's not. Or is he out of it? I can't tell. Well... There's Slam. I believe he is. He is out. He must be because it's greyed out. Drama already then in Bahrain. I told you when it rains it pours and it has definitely poured for the Mercedes and the Ferrari man. Not the way they would have wanted to kickstart their season two. Here's someone who will be happy with how they've kickstarted it. Big Sam with a clean lap on the board. No invalidations. No histrionics. It's a 1 minute 42.3. Quickly not usurped by Dirk, three tenths behind, but Milo, there he is. The McLaren man announces himself on the scene with a 1 minute 41.5. Meanwhile, Giraffe slots himself into P2. There's someone making a yellow flag in sector three. King Didi goes up into P2. Fantastic little lap there. Tagmata, a 1 minute 46.2, although I imagine that is not very representative. Tenassi invalidated his lap, so that will not count, obviously. Buck 57, though, hasn't done so. Across the line, he goes. And it's P6, not finding the most out of these wet conditions. Perhaps one of the Alfa Romeos might find so. Daniel Gilligan starts a flying lap in this qualifying session. Here's J-Lane, though. Completing a lap is a woman at 58. Meanwhile, Buck 20 does go fastest. Almost four tenths ahead of his teammate. The woman at 41.1. The McLaren boys are on the march. Through the first couple of corners for J-Lane. Then battery fully charged up. Down the straight. The symphony of V6 screeching its way up the hill towards the 100 metre board. Late as you dare pinch it into the apex. Hope the car doesn't wash out with understeer quite literally. As you head down towards this right hand complex. Flicking the car in. It's the best sector one of the entire session for J-Lane. Could the Ferrari man announce himself as a proper competitor? You're about to find out. A little bit of understeer going through the right-hander, but in the, in the wet weather, more often than not, is what you can come to expect as we head into this corner. Does he go wide? The answer is he hardly does so. Great success as the prancing horse gallops his way down the straight. Miller up to a 140.4. Now seven temps he usurps his teammate by. Fantastic lap. The McLaren man well and truly on it. Straight out of the gate. King Didi across the line again for another lap. It's only a tenth's worth of improvement. Milo's concocted something filthy, to be honest with you. As out of sector two goes J-Lane. Can't tell if that was the best one because code stinkers won't show me. Down the hill we go. To end this roller coaster rumble. 
into the last corner. Yellow flag in sector three. No idea why, because there's no car going slowly. Codemasters need a new guide dog as the McLaren pulls into the pits. Daniel Gilligan fastest. My goodness me, where did that come from? A woman at 39.8. The Alfa Romeo man quietly sneaks his way up into P1, but pounces on it. Unbelievable stuff there. Alfa Romeo may have what looks like a snake in the logo, but Daniel Gilligan as well and truly constricted P1 into his grasp, briefly so. Thanasi does claim P1, picking up where he left off from Season 1 of F1 23, but only, not even that, 800s ahead of Daniel Gilligan, who put in a scorcher of a lap in the Alfa Romeo. And so it continues. The lap times will go down as Guardian begins a flying lap. And this is why the lap times will be getting faster and faster. DRS now enabled in this qualifying session. And Guardian not deploying any battery whatsoever here as he goes for the Fernando Alonso steering technique. Buck 57's retired because he's had a skill issue. Am I wrong? No, not really because he did crash. All he had to do was wait for the dry period, and he was not patient enough. So one Alpha Tauri down and out, the other one jumping for joy. Buck 57 quite literally with a sinking feeling with these wet, dry conditions. But anyway, as the track now gets rid of its sheen, the Sillet Bang has worn off. Guardian, though, flooring his way round, although not by much. I would suspect Daniel Gilligan goes fastest again with a one minute 38.4. It's absolutely flying. He loves this transitional period of conditions. Fantastic from the Alfa Romeo man, who really has, as his sponsor would say, kicked it into gear and put himself firmly up top. 1.3 seconds. Untouchable. Into the pits then comes Thanasi. That definitely is into the pits. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Here's your P3 man. J-Lane, who I didn't comment on. It's still a great lap nonetheless. Nearly into the 1 minute 39. Peels into the pits though. And the slick tyres will come on. Meanwhile, there's an Aston Martin that's had a problem. Guardian has gone off into Abu Dhabi. In, well, as opposed to Bahrain. Which is not quite what he would have had in his script. But unfortunately, script writers are never kind in this game. Guardian though does keep it together. And has still got a front wing and dignity left. After that particular excursion. Milo, Milo, back onto the track, and he's got softs on his wagon. Well, we all saw this coming. DRS enabled. Of course, there were going to be slicks on. But what can be done now? Daniel Gilligan, of course, top of the pile. One minute 38.4. The driver should be able, in theory, depending on how quickly the track dries up, which I, which looks to be pretty quickly. But I would be under the reasonable assumption that they could get two flying laps in. One flying lap into the pits, new tyres, one warm-up lap, flying lap, end your session. That's if they play their cards right, though. Who will pull their aces out of the hat? Who has the most aces in their deck of cards? The answer is if they have more than four, they are cheating and they should go to prison. But we are about to find out the answer to that question very, very soon indeed. First on the track, in fact, is not a giraffe. It is Dirk. The giraffe is actually on a flying lap here. He came out super early then. Caught me napping. Something's gone wrong with a McLaren. It must be Buck 20 waiting behind. No, it's not. Milo's, in fact, waiting behind. He's got marbles all over his tyres. I can only assume he's waiting for the prime opportunity. To finish his lap on the right foot. Or start his lap on the right foot, should I say. Let's see what happens then. Here comes Giraffe. First across the line on his slick tyres. Across the line. And it's pole position for the Williams driver. A woman at 31.2. 7.2 seconds ahead of anyone else. Giraffe is the GOAT. Except he's not because he's a giraffe. How about that? Of course, though, the first slick lap time of this qualifying session. Expect those times to tumble down at a tremendous rate of knots. Let's find out who will be the first to come along. That isn't Giraffe, who has set a very reasonable benchmark, I must say. 
Let's see what his teammate can do. Dirk, the first one out on track on a set of slick tyres that isn't. That hasn't set a lap time yet, should I say. I'm getting my tenses mixed up and it's all getting very tense out on track, meanwhile. Let's see what Dirk can do. Can he formulate something absolutely brilliant? Giraffe getting dutifully out of the way, I can see on the track map of a bunch of drivers, so kudos to him. Dirk, his teammate, meanwhile, has ripped it round the Sakir International Circuit across the line and goes 700s faster. Great stuff there. The Red Bull next across the line behind to start a flying lap. So forget anything I just said. But Tag Marta will be next to cross the line. Hasn't set a properly representative lap across the line. And it's just a tenth off the Williams pair. The driver behind him just starting a flying lap. It's the Aston Martin of Guardian. Next up, though, is Raiden, who's currently P15 across the line. And it's P4. There we go. We're seeing the times begin to tumble. Milo will come across the line. And fastest by a second for the McLaren man. Great lap there. Mercedes have slammed only two tenths behind. A nice, neat little lap from the Mercedes driver. And now we see what Big Sam and co. can do. Big Sam uh, wasn't starting a lap. It was Magico, in fact. And he goes P3. Great stuff there. Maybe I was right. Maybe it was an upgrade from the Red Bull from the, to the Red Bull from the Alpine. Fantastic stuff. Let's see those times tumble then. The second McLaren, a buck 20, will cross the line to begin his flying lap in this session. DRS wide open, sucking up the slipstream and the fresh air. But here's Danassi, your championship winner in season number one, or technically season 13 of Blackout. And so it goes. Through the right hander, pinching the car in beautifully there. A little bit of wheel spin on the way out, but nothing too dramatic. It's a purple sector one then. Here we go. As he transgresses down the hill, transverses all of the however many corners off this track. I can't be bothered to look up the statistics. Big Sam now up into P3. Both Red Bulls right on top of each other in the standings. Getting very cosy indeed. You love to see it. Here comes Guardian then. DRS wide open at the first opportunity and splits the Red Bull pairing. Fantastic. Great little lap there from Guardian. Tag Marta, meanwhile, probably coming into the pits. And I'm absolutely correct. It's Daniel Gilligan that's one to watch. Fastest sector two. Hello. This could get very spicy indeed. The Alfa Romeo drivers loving this Bahrain International Circuit. Showed it in the intermediate conditions, but King Didi better not hold him up in that Haas car. Looks like he could be impeding him slightly here. Gilligan getting very frustrated and weaving the wheel. Could look like King Didi was on a lap of his own. Gilligan, it doesn't matter though. P3, hardly off the pace of the top two. Fantastic. A very nice lap from the Aston, Mar the Aston Alfa Tauri. I'm going to do those two instead. Tanasi, though, starts yet another flying lap with 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Buck 20, though. Take a bow, son. Almost half a second ahead of his teammate. A 1 minute 29.6 for the McLaren driver as the track continues to improve second by second. Stark, meanwhile, hasn't set a lap time in this session. DRS will be wide open, though, and he does set a lap time, and it's P9. That's the calmest lap time I've done so far. My question is, though, if you started and or finished your lap time now, then well, surely you don't have enough time to come back in and change onto a new set of tyres. That was my, my thinking in terms of what the possible strategy would have been. But it seems like some drivers have opted to go for broke straight away, and it could cost them. It could cost them big time in this qualifying session. We'll just have to wait and see, though. I've been wrong before. I've been wrong many times before, in fact, but it's okay. I'm only human. So, so far then, McLaren 1-2, as we can calm it down just a little bit. Terziak's here. Hello, Terziak. Make it 19 on the grid. Almost a full house of drivers. You'd love to see it. I'm so looking forward to the race when it rolls around very shortly. Just two minutes until the end of qualifying. Like I was saying, Buck 20 and Milo, both McLarens, gridlocking out the front row. One and two. Looking to pick up where they left off last season, but go one better and go for that win in the constructors. Slam P3 for Mercedes. Daniel Gilligan P4 in the Alfa Romeo with a Red Bull 5-6 as Magico improved his lap time. Great stuff, Magico. On it like a car bonnet straight from the offset. Of course, Formula 1 cars don't have car bonnets though. How about that? 
Guardian P7, King Didi P8. Oh, no. Stark with a little twiddle and twizzy out of the final corner. Gets a bit loosey-goosey on the rear end. And it's cost him. He's lost his nose. Voldemort welcomes him as one of his own. But it's certainly not something the Aston Martin bosses will be particularly happy about. As he has egg all over his face. A couple of drivers on outlaps, meanwhile. And a lot of them not on outlaps. It's about a an half and half thing. Daniel Gilligan retires from the session in the pit lane. Milo then, one of the first drivers to start one final flying lap and one final charge for pole position. Don't count him out. Don't even count Slam out. Don't count Thanasi out. Should be able to make it. He's got 50 seconds to do so, so I imagine he'll be able to. But we'll soon find out who has pole position here in the first race of the season for season two on F1 23. I'm working on it. I'm working on the flow slowly but surely. Up the hill then. Battery bleep, 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 being deployed. DRS wide open. ERS being deployed. And the Energizer Bunny is crying. Through that corner, the traction can blind beautifully on that McLaren. As we head down towards the right-hander, pinch it in. Don't get up on the curb too much because the car bottoms out. Or on that outside curb. Milo does great, though. Thanasi takes provisional pole. There he is, meanwhile. But only by two tenths of a second. Not even that. It is vulnerable. It is possible to beat Thanasi in this qualifying session. And the rest of the grid are smacking their chops, licking their lips. Because they taste an opportunity here. Dirk then into the 1 minute 29. Up to P3 he goes provisionally. Milo using all of the track he possibly can to try and find any ounce of pace in this qualifying session. It's hardly anything in it between him and invalidation. A best sector two. This could be it. This could be a close charge for pole position then for the McLaren of Milo who has mauled his way round this Bahrain circuit and is looking to go for one better, in fact three better than he already is. Into the 1 minute 29s and then some. Down the final corner. Clean lap. Nice lap. Across the line. No, it is not pole position. It's still behind his teammate. A 1 minute 29.7. Slam across the line. And doesn't improve his time. J-Lane across the line doesn't improve either. It's only Raiden that could possibly claim pole. But into the pits he must go. E-I-E-I-E-I-O. So once again then. He has no battery left whatsoever in his Alpha Tauri, but he has nothing to prove. Thanasi once again delivers in qualifying. Although I say that, Tag Marta is on a flying lap here, and there's one chance here that Alpine could have of getting pole position in this race. Don't ju adjust your sets, hold your breath. We await with utmost suspense Tag Marta to go for pole position here. Sixth. Sixth. You know what? Decent lap. Well done, that man in the Alpine. Preserving the pedigree and glory. Terziak in the Alpine, by the way. Welcome along. Alpine do have two cars in this race, which means Haas is the only team without two cars. Although, given possible actual real-life stipulations, I wouldn't be surprised. So then... The man of the moment picks up where he left off. Thanasi pole position by nearly two tenths of a second. Buck 20 and Milo P2 and 3. Alpha Tauri have pole position, but McLaren, they are both not far behind at all. So it's going to be interesting then. Thanasi takes pole position, his first pole of season two, and the first pole of this season for any driver. Buck 20 and Milo round out the top three. Then Dirk in P4 for Williams. A great effort from him. Slam in P5. Tag Marta in P6. With Daniel Gilligan 7th for Alfa Romeo. And Jay Lane in 8th. We then have Magico and Big Sam in the Red Bulls. Lining out the top 10. With Guardian, King Didi, Stark, Giraffe, Raiden, Buck, fi Buck 57. Who unfortunately didn't manage to get a slick time. Because he met Barry R. And then Maximus, Terziak and FRS Elliot didn't set a time in this session. Well, there we go then. Qualifying is up. And you know what that means? That's right. It's race time. Well, uh, what did you think it was going to be? That's the real question. It's going to be chaos then. As you can see, it's raining. Like I said, wet to dry. 
living up to the rain in Bahrain. Do you hear the noise in Sakir? You don't yet, but it will soon be a symphony of V6 turbo hybrid noise. And I am all here for it. The intermediate tyres lined up in the garages there in Red Bull and Ferrari. So you can see hopefully all the way down the pit lane. Unless, well, due to budget cuts, you've got to carve out your own intermediate out of a slick tyre. Which is probably not very healthy for the tyre. But you know what? Stranger things have been done in Formula 1. In 2014, all the nose cones looked like a penis, pretty much. That was a weird time. What can we expect then? Can Thanasi claim a lights the flag victory? Can he pick up where he left off from last season? Or will the McLarens have something to say about it? Or will there be another element in this surprise tale? Let's find out. Five red lights in Bahrain. Lights out and away we go. Thanasi with a decent start. It looks like Buck 20 is getting the best of his traction though. Despite the hear feeling and hearing of wheel spin, he goes down the inside and straight away, as I, well, didn't really predict, it was one of the questions I said, but there's the answer for you. Buck 20 gets through this carnage behind me while as lots of people dropping positions, a bit of a collision at turn number one, but it's Buck 20 that has the lead from Thanasi and Milo all over the back of him. Daniel Gilligan sends one to the inside of Tagmata and Slam. Three wide through turn number three. Fantastic stuff. Daniel Gilligan side by side with the Alpine. The Alfa Romeo man has the supremacy. Brilliant racing already here on lap number one. And Magico side by side with Slam in that Mercedes. Trying to head the inside, but momentum could be in the Mercedes man's favour. Just because he has time to really use the momentum and gain the traction sooner. Has the inside line for the hairpin and gets it done. Daniel, meanwhile, looking for a move at the inside of the hairpin. A bit of a cheeky tag on the Williams of Dirk up ahead, but nothing to fear. There we go then, settling down just a tiny bit then, or are we? Magico hounding the rear end of Slam straight away like a rabid dog. Slam, meanwhile, was a time penalty already for corner cutting. That's not gone well at all for him, but anyway... Buck 20 up into P1 after that start. Thanasi P2, Milo P3, Dirk P4, Daniel Gilligan all over the back of him. Just two temps separate them and surely a move will be made as we head on board with the Alfa Romeo driver. Not using battery just yet. Fainting to the inside thinking about it. A bit wide from the Williams driver. In sympathy, Mr Gilligan follows him but now has the slipstream and can use it all the way through. However, there could be a pass for the lead here. Thanasi already to the inside, although Buck 20 brilliantly defends. Somehow has the straight line speed in his favour. Daniel Gilligan, meanwhile, is the man to watch. Not quite making a move, as I thought he would have done. Meanwhile, it's FRS Elliot that's actually on the move. Or should I say Elliot? Down the inside of Buck 57 then. And round the outside at the next, couple of, next corner gets the move done. Fantastic stuff. Slam, meanwhile, racing up against Stark here. The man who won many a race. It's actually Elliot, though, that goes down the inside. Momentum in the Mercedes man's favour. Ninth and tenth used to be owned by Red Bull. Mercedes have decided to mortgage it for themselves now. Still side by side between the two. As down the inside remains that Mercedes man. Stark now still side by side. Brilliant racing already. As Daniel gets past Dirk, as Dirk goes for an excursion to Saudi Arabia. Magico up into P6. It's all happening behind, and Elliot does get the move done for P10. All happening, and it's still happening as the Haas of King Didi gets past Terziak in the Haas car, and Terziak goes a bit wide. So Raiden now could be on the move as he has that inside line. On board with the Alpine, quickly switching over, or not, to the Alfa Romeo, who in the end opts to stay behind. Thanasi, though, is piling all of the pressure insurmountable pressure surely Buck 20 doing well to get the lead at the start a great start from the McLaren man but it's almost inevitable you can feel it in your fingers feel it in your bones Christmas is not all around you at least not just yet we've got a couple of months yet before we have to think about that or maybe already you do Tesco seem to be thinking about it but in the slipstream on board with Thanasi it's almost textbook it is textbook he understood the assignment. The teacher will grade it as he remains down the inside. Buck 20 trying to use the momentum on the outside, but he outbreaks himself. And easy as you like, Thanasi coaxes his way up into P1 in this race. Maximus, meanwhile, maximizing his performance in the Ferrari and going up into P7. 
And now it's all at Guardian and J-Lane moving up positions as Buck57 plummeting down the order, it would seem. Goodness me, all happening here. FRS Elliott looking for a move on Tag Marta has got past his teammate and start going round the outside of Slam. A lovely, neat little move there, but Slam is not done yet. Still keeping his nose in, but nothing doing there. Elliot does get past in the foreground, meanwhile, of Tag Marta. A great little race from the back of the grid. He's already up to P8. The wet conditions then, doing exactly what I thought they would. Separating out that field, showing who has their metal. Fighting at the hairpin between Slam and Stark. Meanwhile, Slam st gets back ahead, actually, of the Aston Martin, but has that penalty to his name, remember? So it's not all as it seems. What battles could be happening? Well, Dirk's not loving these conditions at the best of times. Magico's keeping up with him, but Maximus is keeping the pressure very high indeed. What is the simmer for Dirk from Magico? It's turning into a boil. Meanwhile, Raiders had a spin or an off of some kind. It's not gone well at all. But it does keep the car on the road and it's only emotional damage. And what on earth's happened here then? Daniel Gilligan's right on the back of these four. Off the back of the four, should I say. He's on the back of these three. I'm really not with it. And he's got the fastest lap by quite some margin, by the way. One minute 41.4. He's loving these conditions, I told you. He loved the conditions in qualifying. And he's loving them in the race too. Meanwhile, Slam, past Tag Marta, he goes on the main straight. And he does get past, although breaks very late indeed. Doesn't matter though. Does keep the position firmly in his stronghold. Up into P9 for the Mercedes man. Meanwhile, Elliot keeping up his progress. Magico, who was P6, passed by Maximus and passed by the Mercedes of Elliot as well. Moves being made all over the place then. Here's someone who's really piling on the pressure. They call him the voice because he commentates. And he's also got a great voice, honestly. Have you heard this man putting on the pressure then into the hairpin? Buck 20 going a bit wide as Milo actually has taken P2 in all the confusion. What on earth's happened? Dirk's had a problem coming out of the right-hander. Had a problem there earlier and he's had a bigger problem. He could have a bigger -er problem if he ends up crashing there later. Hopefully that doesn't happen. A Ferrari goes off into Narnia, meanwhile. And Elliot is now up into P5. It's a drag race down to the left-hander. Give me a good camera angle to confirm that the Mercedes driver is up into P5. The Constructors Championship winning team of last year, fifth and eighth, and making solid progress through the field. Terziak in the Alpine, meanwhile, up into P17, passing Big Sam in the Red Bull. The Nassi, though, your leader. As we look down the field, the fifth of the way through this race already. It is all happening, and now it turns almost into a quarter. Thanasi does reclaim the fastest lap. Not by much, though. Mr. Gilligan was right on it. Pretty much in the same 10th bracket, but 1.6 seconds the gap. J-Lane passes Tagmata, and so does Stark. It's all happening here. I was going to give you a race update, but there's so much happening, I can hardly think. Raiden, meanwhile, is really, really not gelling with the conditions at all. There's a good reason for that. It's not gel, it's water. But it's no consolation to him. P19, and he could... Well, the dry conditions can't come soon enough for him. Meanwhile, it's Dirk that is defending from Slam. Slam down the inside. Hopefully, he doesn't live up to his name. And no, he doesn't. He does not live up to his name. It's a has that's off, meanwhile. King Didi's had an oopsie. He's got King in his name, but he is really being schooled by the wet weather conditions currently. Although, it does look increasingly like there is no rain in the sky, and I would be right. As a meteorologist myself, I can tell that no raindrops means it's going to get less wet. And this brings another element, of course. When do you pit? When do you pull the trigger? Of course, you can listen to your engineer, which is great. But if you're further back, you might actually get that call when the leaders cross the line. And then, who knows how much you gain as the intermediates overheat. As they aren't suited to these dry conditions. They're too abrasive. The heating window different. It actually have to be easier on the tyre, of course. Because they're made to generate more heat. Meanwhile, Guardian getting past Tag Marta. Brilliant stuff. Elliot's left the session, I assume, with disconnect problems. Which is not ideal at all. Magico back up into P6, meanwhile. Great stuff. All the racing happening here. Daniel Gilligan again with the fastest lap. And getting past Milo. Because Milo is in the pits. 
And he's actually going to go for the move on Buck20 as well. Break as late as you dare. Buck20 breaks late in sympathy. DRS enabled. Daniel Gilligan up into P2. Yes, he is. Great little move. Momentum absolutely monstrous for the Alfa Romeo driver. And the voice shouts his way up into P2. Meanwhile, Elliot has rejoined, but can I just say, it actually could be a blessing from the gods almighty, because the AI has actually pit for him onto the hard tyres, DRS enabled on this lap, of course. And I was just saying this, if you're the leaders, you might get that strategy called just a little bit too late. If you aren't in that leading group, you might just have the opportunity to come in earlier, fit those slick tyres on, and gain a whole host of time on those cars ahead of you. That didn't make that bold gamble, and that could prove the case. For Mr. Millo, over here. 4.6 seconds currently, the gap to Guardian up ahead. And I'll be anxiously watching that gap as the lap goes on. A little bit of a gain on the exit, but nothing major currently. It looks like it could still be too early, briefly. Although, there's an Alpha, there's uh, there are the Alpha Tauri words that's gone off. Buck 20, facing the wrong way, and has no nose. What do you call a man with no nose? The answer is nobody knows. All I can tell you is that he's probably very embarrassed about that particular mistake. And what could have proved as an inspired strategy call has gone firmly in the pit. And it means a virtual safety car. Which means if you're the leaders now, you get a free pass almost. Which is great news for you. And this man could well be in the fight for a podium. In fact, not even could well. He is in the fight for a podium. Let's get that cleared up straight away. The Alfa Romeo man bringing the team to heights. Only once seen when a certain crow was in the car. Mr. Rye Crow from season one. I sung his praises so many times at Silverstone and at Hungary. At Silverstone, the wet weather overtaking he did was fantastic. In Hungary, went on to win the race. Win it. Ahead of the Leviathans that are Thanasi and Timalele. He did that. So, Thanasi P1 then at this virtual safety car period. Mr. Gilligan P2. Buck 20 P3. Milo P4. But actually further behind than he would have bargained for. Because of that virtual safety car. So, we are back on the way then. And look how many penalties there are. You have to be having a laugh. There are now six penalties that are spread across the field. What on earth are those about? Let's check the penalties. We have five drive through penalties for people in this race. Both Ferraris have drive throughs Magico has a drive through Guardian has a drive through And Dirk has a drive through Buck 20 gets past Daniel Gilligan, though. And he's on the mediums. That's why, then. So he's gone ultra-aggressive. Thanasi, for some reason, on softs. Daniel Gilligan, I think rather smartly, has gone onto the hard tyres. And we'll see out the rest of this race, I have no doubt. And Elliot's retired. No, what on earth's happened there? We have to go on with Slam then to see what on earth happened. I can't find it soon enough. Terziak could well be close to the scene. And the answer is there has been a crash. But there has to have been a crash. Because that's the only way he could be out of this race. Although he's still driving along. What on earth's happened? He's joined in, but he's just DNF'd out of the race. His, his AI has actually given up on him. His AI has said, I've had enough. So, there you go then. Elliot might have a fighting spirit and was up in P5. His AI, though, clearly doesn't have that same conscience because he's an AI and therefore a belligerent, bumbling fool. As a result, then, struggle town season for Mercedes and that is not what they would have been looking for at all Stark fastest lap with a woman at 34.7 this is the vintage Stark we know and love Giraffe sticks his neck into it briefly claims the fastest lap before Big Sam does so Terziak claims fastest lap next and those times expect them to come tumbling down as this race transgresses so the Nassi P1 Buck 20 remaining on the coattails of DRS briefly but now he's not Daniel Gilligan, P3, on the hard tyres, remember. Milo on the hard tyres as well in P4. A second pretty much separating each car in the top four. And so it continues. Dirk in P5 with Stark P6, although that will be P5, because there have been about a milli 11 million billion drive-through penalties because of the virtual safety car. Rule number one in Formula One, stick within the delta time and you won't get a penalty. Thank you. I know. It's pretty genius, isn't it? 
Stark firmly in the slipstream. Then DRS, of course, is firmly open. Straight not long enough to do anything, though, about the Williams ahead of him. As Dirk now 17 seconds off the front four. The battling in the mid-pack has been absolutely ferocious, and it's clear to see what kind of effect that's had. Tanasi with fastest lap, meanwhile, again, picking up where he left off. And 1 minute 31.1 for the AlphaTauri driver. Buck 22 seconds behind, Milo is firmly within reach of claiming P3 from L Gilligan, although a slide at the end of turn one was not part of his script. Unfortunately, he has to settle for his P4, but with a constant, with a, with a, what's the word? With a complimentary flap opening for him. Stark inherits P5 then, as the drive through for Dirk is indeed served. Let's see where Dirk filters out onto the circuit. The answer is behind Magico, behind Maximus. As Jay Lane here in the slipstream of Guardian thinks about going for the move, but actually it's Guardian going around the outside of the Williams and it's put him off slightly. It's actually spooked him a tiny bit there. The darkness descends and the nightmares begin. But DRS wide open for Guardian as a result of Dirk coming out of the pit lane. And you'd think they would try and clear the Williams driver. All of them on mediums, though. Guardian with a slide, though. And J-Lane will say, thank you very much indeed. I will inherit P14. Thanasi, P1 then. Just calming it down a tiny bit here as we go on. Although Slam is well and truly on the back of Tagmata. Only a tenth. Separating him. And oh no! Another incident and it's a safety car as there's been a massive accident. The Ferrari of Maximus in the wall. And that means the field gets bunched up. And if your name is Tanasi, what do you do? Well, if you're Milo, you're going onto a new set of softs and that is an inspired decision there from the McLaren driver straight away making the call not losing as much time as potentially others would from this safety car period out of the pits he comes remains in P4 bunch of drivers coming in as well my goodness me what have we got the answer is and Aston Martin, both Red Bulls, Williams, both Alpine cars, etc., etc. There you go. There's the whole list. Guardian in the pits as well. Dirk in, J Lane in. As they all come out of the pits, what is Stark on? The answer is Stark is on soft. I imagine most of the field will be on softs now. At least you think they would be. Here we are then. If you've just joined, lap number 10 of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Thanasi, your race leader then. From buck 20 in the McLaren. Daniel Gilligan in P3. Milo in P4, but has made a stop onto a new set of soft tyres. Slam in P5. Giraffe in P6. Stark P7. King DD8. Tag Marta in 9th. And Big Sam in P6. 10 so far. We'll see how it all plays out then as Thanasi comes into the pits, as will Buck 20, and as will Mr. Gilligan, as I would have expected. Let's see what Milo can get out of this, though. Milo really going for it, actually. Or was going for it, should I say. Now has to wait for the Delta, and off he goes again. And he might well have been the first to come into the pits. Can he get the jump on the Alfa Romeo is the question. The answer is yes, he does. He does get ahead of Daniel. Up into P3, McLaren back where they started then in two and three. It's actually the top three as it was. Which is great news for McLaren in their constructors hall. Alfa Tari in this race couldn't have more contrasting fortunes if they tried. Thanasi P1, Buck 57, living up to the second number in his name but adding 10 on. Which is, for lack of a better term, not ideal. They will all line up behind the safety car then. And we'll have a few laps of safety car then. As we process. And wait for the rest of the field to bunch back up.
I'm glad we have Bahrain and Jeddah on the agenda today. I didn't get to do these live in my first ever season of commentary for Blackout. What I can tell you is that last season, Timalele took it to the double. Two wins in a row. Won it on the last court. Nay, the last straight in Bahrain. It's between him and Tom. Drag race to the line. Tom was on softs, I believe. Or mediums, I think. Timalele on the hards, but the hards just held on that little bit longer. And he breezed past at the end. I say breezed past. It was only like six tenths, six tenths, six hundredths of a second at the end. Hardly anything to separate them. In Jeddah, it was hard racing in the end, and Timalele managed to prevail, although Thanasi and Tom were keeping him very honest throughout the race. The triple T, the triple threat, as I like to call them. They might not like me calling them that, but it's what I'm going to call them anyway. Let's talk about Bahrain then. Circuit first on the calendar in 2004. There's a hair in my mouth. That's disgusting. You didn't need to know, but I told you anyway. First on the calendar in 2004. Used to be a day race for a, a sizable period of time. Also a circuit that's used multiple layouts in its time. Of course, the normal Grand Prix circuit has been used ever since its conception and inception. Although, in 2010, to celebrate Formula One's 60th anniversary, they used the endurance layout, and it was, it was, it was terrible, to be honest with you. But Alonso won, so I was pretty happy about that. And then, in 2020... When the world seemed to stop moving, Formula One carried on putting the wheels in motion, as it should, and as it did. We saw some great tracks that season. Mugello, the return of Imola, the Nürburgring. And then we had Bahrain. We had two races here, one at the normal track and one at the outer layout. A track with lap times that were less than a minute. George Russell in the Mercedes for the very first time in that race. Could have won the race, but was shafted out of it twice. Eventually would get his Mercedes win in 2022. But it was Sergio Perez that took his first win in the racing point. He then moved to Red Bull. And the rest of the day is history for possibly the wrong reasons this season. Safety car in then at the end of this lap. And we will go racing here in bar rain did actually start out raining yet to see any sheep though so Nashi then backs the pack up let's ride on board with the man in second buck 20 using the brake bias to his advantage heating up the tyres waiting for the AlphaTauri driver to pull the trigger buck 20 in season 1 has traditionally not had the greatest uh, restart prowess as it were Let's see if he does this time then. Green light, green flag almost, but not quite. Buck 20 not caught, sleeping fully. And away we go for eight more laps. Eight more tours of the Bahrain International Circuit. And Buck 20 in the slipstream, immediately go for the move again. Oh my goodness. Down the inside goes the McLaren man on Thanasi. Thanasi tried to hold it round the outside and does so beautifully. Wheel to wheel stuff, but Buck 20 takes the lead from your championship winner from last season. Thanasi will not give this up. You know he won't, but has to settle in in the wheel tracks for now. Goodness me. Buck 20 back up into P1 then. His starts have been electric. Terziak, meanwhile, moves up into P10. Into sizable points. Stark up into P6 ahead of Giraffe. Tag Marta up into P8. I wish I was watching the battles, but unfortunately I'm missing them all. Stark, though, could well and truly be on Slam's case. He's some, for some reason on the hard tyres. And you have to wonder what on earth was going on there in that Mercedes camp. Because the Aston Martin is surely going to swallow him up wide for Slam through the hairpin. And, well, through an eccentric amount of gamma exposure, Stark will not be alongside as they come into the next section. Slam probably absolutely mauling the battery beyond belief. It's actually J-Lane that could be going for a move, but nothing doing there. Washes out with understeer on the outside. Stark, meanwhile, does get past. 
during that complex. The soft tyres clearly have more purchase. And Thanasi now is the one to watch on the attack. Although it could be Giraffe that makes a move first. King Didi behind making moves. Look at that. Alpine and Hasline are stern. Down the inside goes Giraffe. Down the inside. No. Contact. And spinning round goes Slam. Pirouetting 360 degrees. It's a 10 out of 10 from Craig Revel Horwood. But it's unfortunately a 0 out of 10 from the race racecraft gods quite frankly who are not happy with that eventuality J Lane does get past Big Sam up into P10 no down the inside and hits Magico now and there's a front wing off from the Williams of Giraffe behind and they hug each other out of sympathy J Lane saying oh, I'm sorry Magico saying bugger off no you're not virtual safety car once again and actually I didn't see it Daniel Gilligan on softs no he's not on mediums freaking knob He's actually on mediums. Yellow and red are not the same colour, believe it or not, everyone. I didn't see he was on the mediums, though. That could prove very interesting. Virtual safety car briefly neutralises things. Dirk had a problem somewhere. A massive problem. Down in P17. For what? Why? I have no idea. End plate missing on the right of the Williams car. J-Lane has egg on his face. Raiden has more egg on his face. He's got the whole omelette. As he has a drive through penalty for speeding under the virtual safety car. Not ideal at all. Here are your top three then. All in the same picture. Thanasi did retake P1. I don't think I needed to commentate that. I thought it was just predictable at this point. But there you go. Could be ending soon. No idea. I wish I knew. Could be an absolute slobber knocker until the end though. And I'm all here for it. You would think that the, the, the debris has been cleared up by now. And it seems like it is because Thanasi and co are absolutely flooring it. And out of the final corner, Buck 20 had such a great piece of momentum. And it's going to be side by side down the straight. Not even that. DRS is enabled. But Buck 20 doesn't need it to absolutely soar his way up into P1. But Thanasi on the brakes. The outside line being left available. Although switchback season, it could well be for the Alpha Tauri man. Not getting the purchase quite as much as the McLaren. Although with DRS down the straight, he could gobble up the slipstream. Give it a good suck and potentially go to the inside. But no, doesn't go for it. A little bit wide from Buck 20 through that corner. But to no avail. It is indeed Buck 20 that keeps the lead from Thanasi and Milo. And if Buck 20 plays his cards right here, Milo could well and he could help Milo out a treat basically. Could be a nice bit of teamwork, although a slide out of that corner was probably not the way to do it. Thanasi now all over the back of him, breaking a bit earlier into the hairpin, looking for a potential avenue. What, an, what Alonso did in real life there was nothing short of sublime, quite frankly. DRS wide open for the AlphaTauri driver. Wisely bides his time and waits it out. Milo, though, keeping a watching breath in case these two do make contact. We've seen it already. Two times out of two. Slam getting pirouetted. And then it was Giraffe. That got caught up in the crossfire of J-Lane. And the Mercedes. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was actually. Well, it can't have been anyone else because Elliot's out of it. Uh, sorry. Thanasi actually not keeping a massive inroad on Buck 20. Over six tenths is the gap. And yes, DRS is powerful. Uh, but it's not that powerful, I think, as far as you can tell. Magico, meanwhile. Oh, no, it's the Red Bull. I apologise. Oh, it's the battle of the two men. The Red Bull and the Ferrari men go head-to-head. -head. DRS wide open for both of them. Magico was nerfed into turn one. Round the outside, holding it on the Ferrari. Can he keep it? Still side-by-side -side with him. Has the inside, but the momentum is in J-Lane's favour. And he keeps the position. Guardian, meanwhile, is the one making moves with the RS wide open. Not even a contest. And it's Magico behind that looked briefly very racy indeed. Thinking about a kamikaze dive bomb to the inside, but to no avail. He remains in P13 for the moment. Teammate Big Sam could be onto something here. Oh no, Dirk's had a problem. He's had a spinner Rooney. It's a pirouette that sees the strictly dodges on their feet and applauding for joy. But the F1 gods are not looking on that favourably. J-Lane, though, passed Slam. Now, Slam must have made a mistake. Although, well, to be honest, the hards are probably goosed at this point. So that could well be why. But there you go, then. J-Lane on the move. Despite nerfing Magico into the fifth dimension. 
He's making amends for it now with his race craft. Buck 20 holding down the lead. To that last corner, great momentum there. Going gained about two tenths just on the apex, and now trying to break the slipstream. But you wonder how long will it last for? DRS wide open, and hardly any battery needing to be used before Thanasi sweeps past and into P1 in this race, holding the apex down there. Although Buck 20 has some. Oh my goodness! Fantastic momentum, and who will have DRS? It is Buck 20 that has it. Will he think about a move? The outside line is his for the taking. Should he want to use it? Round the outside. Can he make a sumptuous move? The answer is no. No, he can't. Thanasi does keep the lead in this particular instance, but it's great to see clean and beautiful racecraft at the front of the field. Elsewhere in the field, uh, if I speak, let's have a look at Guardian then, because why not? Although it's Milo that could well put, be putting his teammate under pressure now. Has one lap older, softs technically, although it's Giraffe now past his teammate into turn number one. The Williams fighting for that solitary point between themselves at the moment. Miller really is on the back of his teammate. His teammate falling like a stone. What on earth's gone on there? Sector two problems for J-Lane. Karma does indeed bite. And what on earth's happened? The answer is there is a lack of an end plate, which means the aerodynamic efficiency is more like a rhinoceros on that car. Not part of the script for the Ferrari man. Miller then surely will have to take that position. There's no way he doesn't. Three temps behind and getting a better exit on that corner. You have to think he'll be the one that has to send it towards Thanasi at the front. The answer is Buck 20. It's not a difficult overtake at all. DRS wide open and easy up into P2 for Milo. Meanwhile, it could be Magico on the move next or in fact Big Sam. Great exit from him against the house of King Didi. Although he himself is DRS on Guardian. So it all just neutralizes itself a little bit more. And my word, the straight line speed on that Haskar was absolutely unbelievable. Fantastic stuff. It is indeed Magico making the moves. And those hard tyres really aren't paying dividends for the Mercedes driver. The Red Bull sweeps past and into P11 now. So then, as things simmer down a little bit here in the boiling Bahrain bonanza, let's see what it's looking like. Thanasi, two seconds ahead of his next closest challenger of Milo with Buck 20, just behind his teammate. Daniel Gilligan, P4, Stark, P5, Terziak and Tagmata, 6th and 7th for Alpine. Guardian in 8th, King DD 9th, Big Sam in 10th and still just hanging on to DRS. Magico into P11 with Slam 12th, J-Lane in 13th, Buck 57 in 14th, Giraffe 15th, Dirk in 16th and hounding his teammate all the while. A little bit over that curve and a little bit crisscross there from Giraffe. The two Williams then going head to head, sword to sword. No holds barred. Let's see what goes on there. J Lane, of course, with front wing damage. I'm watching that gap being melted away by Buck 57, who hasn't had the race go his way at all, let's be honest, but is catching hand over fist in his final two laps. Nothing doing there. Then Alfa Romeo's had a problem. Raiden has just, it's just not been his day in Bahrain. But at least, at least his AI didn't decide for him. At least he was allowed to make the decision himself. And I respect that. King Didi does get past Guardian, meanwhile, or tries to get past Guardian. The outside line, though, is absolutely subduous from Guardian. That was scintillating. A great piece of momentum from the Aston Martin. And he might not have battery left, but he has plenty of spirit. P8 for the Aston Martin. And so it continues. King Didi trying to find all the breaking points, moving which way and what way with two tours, just under two tours to go. Dirk actually gets past his teammate into turn number one. No contact between the two drivers. Very respectful stuff. And on they go on their merry way. So then, we watch this fight then for P8. Three cars in the potential hunt. Guardian, the hunted. King Didi, Hunter. Big Sam, the great white shark in the background, waiting for blood to be spilt in the water. And it all could come to a head here on the very last lap of this race. Buck 57, by the way. Can I just say, it's 4.6 seconds back. How much damage is J-Lane actually driving with? I swear it was just an end plate. 
an M plate, oh, it's an M plate and actually older soft tyres. Let's check the tyre life while we are here. The answer is J Lane, five lap older tyres than Buck 57. Just through that corner, a few temps gained. Meanwhile, Giraffe gets past Dirk before the Sector 2 split, before, well, not even close to the Sector 2 split, before the left hander even comes. He breezes past. King Didi and Big Sam, of course, on the medium tyres. And hopefully now that crossover will begin to happen. And King Didi now opting for the outside. Those mediums could work better. And the answer is yes, they finally do. King Didi has whittled away at it for such a long time and finally gets it done. Sam, meanwhile, does get past back, back past Magico. So the hard tyres, I said they were goosed. Not quite. It's not all as it seems here. King Didi and Guardian still fighting hand over fist. Oh no! Guardian in the wall in the background. After all his hard work to keep them behind. He has his front wing gone. Egg on his face. It's not gone the way he would have imagined it to do so. Unbelievable. Does keep dutifully out of the way of the AlphaTauri and the Ferrari. Great stuff from him. Meanwhile though, I've hardly watched him this race. Had a bit of a scare briefly from Buck 20 from both McLarens, even from the Alfa Romeo of Mr. Gilligan, who has begun to catch up to the two McLarens. But when push comes to shove, he won the championship last season. He begins where he left off. Thanasi wins the first race of the season in commanding fashion. It will be five seconds. McLaren process across the line for a 2-3 finish. 20 thousandths of a second between them. My goodness me, that one was a bit close. Daniel Gilligan just over a second behind. Another lap or two and those mediums would have put him on the right foot. Tagmata, we wait to cross the line and does so cleanly for P7. King Didi and Big Sam, 8th and 9th. Slam in the end will come home in 10th. Magico, though, fighting all the way to the bitter end, but it won't be enough. Penalties being applied. Buck 57 did actually get past J-Lane. So it did happen for the Alpha Tauri driver. Not able to capitalise on the penalties, but it's some penance after what was not the greatest race weekend or not the luckiest race weekend he could have ever hoped for. There you go then. The fireworks go off. The celebrations begin, especially for this man. Moved from Mercedes to Alfa Tauri. Many called him mad. How dare you move from Mercedes to Alfa Tauri? You must be out of your mind. He said, like Kimi Raikkonen once said, leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. And didn't he just? P1. First win for Alfa Tauri this season. And it's the first race for any driver this season. In a wet to dry spectacle in Sakia. We wait for Raiden to cross the line then. Definitely not been Raiden's day. But he'll come back stronger. Of course we have another race this evening. So anything can happen. As it always does in Formula 1. It usually does. That's what Murray Walker said. And wasn't he right? My goodness me. Well, like I said, a bit of a scare. A tiny bit of a scare for Thanasi briefly at the start, at the restart. Buck 20 was snapping at his heels. But when it came down to it, he weathered the storm. Bode, bided. Bode his time. I think it's Bode. Doesn't really matter. But the point is, he still weathered the storm, quite literally in many senses. And he beats his chest. He says, I am here. He announces himself to the Alpha Tauri faithful. And says, I'm not going anywhere. I claim full ownership of the top step. Unless someone takes me out. Or something goes catastrophically wrong. But what can stop Thanasi? That's what the F1 game headlines would probably be saying. They did that with Sebastian Vettel back in the day. But there you go. That's your race classification. The fireworks continue bursting on in the background. The rain has somehow come back in all of this. Not entirely sure how, but anyway, when God stops crying, we'll, we'll, we'll get the conspiracy theories out of the way. Basically, Thanasi wins and claims fastest lap, which means he has the full complement of 33 points. Milo and Bark 20 claim 2 and 3 for McLaren with Mr. Gilligan P4. A great start to his season and Alfa Romeo's season. 
Stark P5, Alpine 6th and 7th. Great result from Terziak after starting from the back. King DD 8th, Big Sam 9th, Slam in 10th with Magico, Big, uh, Buck 57, J Lane, Guardian and Dirk rounding out your point scorers. Giraffe and Raiden rounding out the finishers with Maximus and Elliot. Unfortunately not finishing this race. And I'm gutted for Elliot really. Was in P5 and with that safety car I would have loved to have seen what he could have done from there. Because he could have been right up at the sharp end. I have literally zero doubt about that. But we will never know. We will never know. Not for Bahrain, at least. We do have... We do have another race, though, tonight. Don't we just... We have Saudi Arabia to come about. And if Saudi Arabia, if it's as chaotic as it always is, then we are in for an absolute treat. And I hope you're all ready for it. There you go, then. A crazy first race to start off proceedings this evening. I enjoyed it. I certainly hope you did too. And don't adjust your sets. Don't leave your seats. Stay super glued to them. Actually get some super glue if you need to. Actually, no, I don't endorse that. But the point is, you don't want to miss all of the chaos that happens in Jeddah. Because it usually does happen. Let's be honest. When hasn't it happened? It's Tanasi then that takes the first win of the season. But McLaren are hot on his heels. And not only that, they are looking to go one better in the constructors. And have started off on the perfectly correct foot to do so. We're going to take a little break then. We will soon be back with plenty of Blackout Racing League action. Another 35% race over in Jeddah.
Well, here we are then. I hope you've stayed super glued to your seats, because I certainly have. It's time to get into short qualifying at Saudi Arabia. Like I said before, 35% race once again. So perhaps just a one-stop affair once again, but perhaps maybe some variance in what tyre compounds. Do you go for the softer option or do you go for the harder option? Who likes it hard and who likes it soft is what I'm trying to say. Although that probably breaks TOS. But anyway, 15 seconds until we get underway. In fact, I was, I was reading through the... The uh, the ongoing conversation at the end. Stark said his force feedback decided to go on holiday. Quite frankly, during the first race, and I and he has a fan attack, and that happens with me all the time as well. So, and I have a fan attack. So, there you go. It doesn't matter what wheel you have. No one is safe from the history of the code masters. Here we are though, in the cornflake spoon Grand Prix, or um. A certain reproductive item shapes Grand Prix. Codemasters is a franchise that doesn't know how to make a good game. Okay, maybe that's a bit harsh. I mean, you could, okay, here's the thing with F123. I said this last season as well. Game is fantastic to drive. Absolutely fantastic to drive. Love it. Can't complain. It's, um,. Almost everything else about it that's a problem, <laughs> which is not ideal. They haven't addressed career. They haven't done anything to career mode, should I say. Out of the pits comes Dirk, our first car, who's taken a cracking at it. If you know what I'm saying? Out of the pits comes the Williams driver then. Unlike Bahrain, where there's actually quite a lot of runoff area, where you can kind of sort yourself out and gather up your thoughts before you get things back together. Well, you can't do that here. Walls crowd you. It's almost claustrophobic how closed in it feels. One wrong mistake, like up on that curb, which is what Mick Schumacher did in real life in 2022. Could send you spooning off into the barrier with egg on your face, a big repair bill, and emotional damage. But yeah, like I was saying, F123. Best to drive, in my opinion. Doesn't address career mode. Still haven't fixed most of the glitches. Somehow have re-added glitches that they were supposed to have got rid of. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a mess. Let's put it that way. I know some people say, oh, it's EA that have ruined Codemasters. No, 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 no. Codemasters have done this before. They've done this little stunt before with their games. So don't pin it all on EA. Codemasters are just as, if not actually, more culpable of the blame that should be received for the state of the F1 game currently. But anyway, enough about that. I am the optimism overlord, and I'm optimistic that Dirk is going to give us a great representation of what a lap of Jeddah looks like. On board with the Williams driver, let's take you through a lap then of one of F1's newest additions on the calendar. Into turn one, breaking at about 100 metres, late as you dare, and my god, that was even then some. Just after the 100 meter board, pinch it all together, try and get the car straightened out as early as possible. Use as much of that curb as possible. And then you want to flick it in early for this curb. Keep it close to the wall. Don't go over that curb on the right initially, because you'll bottom out and look like a twig. Through these sets of corners, then don't use that curb on the outside. But then these curbs just speak for themselves. You can skate over that curb, but be careful how much of the car you do use. A very representative sector one from Dirk as we head through the left hander. Pinch it in initially, you can let the car wash out a bit and use the camber of the corner to boost the momentum, gain the traction and fly out of it. Into the right hander, late as you dare, try and pinch it into the wall as much as you can but without actually hitting it. A little bit of time on the table to find there but DRS now wide open as he crosses the line there. Lots of corners as you can see but the straight's so long, well it might as well be a straight. Break at the black box and then try and pinch it into the apex. A little bit wide from the Williams driver, but nothing too bad. The primary aim here is to keep it out of the walls. If you don't do that, then it's not ideal, basically, is all I'm trying to say. Down through the left hander, though. Basically another straight because DRS wide open. Late as you dare, about 100, if not slightly later. Don't hit the wall on the outside. You can keep it close there to keep the car straightened out and boost on the power. Dirk with a very nice, comfortable lap time. A 1 minute 29.5. A great little start to qualifying from the Williams driver. And let's see what the other drivers have in store. 
The answer is it's Terziak on an outlap that's going to cross the line next. It's one of the Red Bulls that's going to cross the line. Big Sam, only two tenths behind. Not bad at all. Alpha Tauri, my God, Buck 57 has turned on the afterburners. A 1 minute 27.6. Let's see what Guardian has to offer. A 1 minute 29.5. J-Lane in the 1 minute 27s as well. Buck 20, not quite in the 1 minute 27s. Just a bit off. FRS Elliott across the line, up into P4. 1 minute 28.6, a comfortable little lap there. His game experienced many issues, although basically that's everyone's F123 copy experiencing many issues, but his in particular completely shafted and roasted him. He was being barbecued during that race, it was so much roasting. Had multiple problems, Red Bull 7th and 8th currently as Magico crosses the line. Slam up into P5 just behind his teammate. Consistency is key for Mercedes then. Let's see what Tagmata can do. I'm getting the wrong drivers all over, but he splits the Mercedes pairing. And then it's the Alfa Romeo behind. Across the line he goes to start a flying lap. Here comes Daniel Gilligan then. Through he goes. Through the first couple of corners. Yellow flags in sector one there. There's a Red Bull, I think, getting hugely out of the way. Into this corner. A little bit of time to find in that left hand up. Can just carry the momentum more than you think. It's just about finding confidence, especially at this track where it's a street circuit and the walls are basically cuddling you around every single corner. You don't want them to, but they're there anyway. Terziak up into P4. Great lap from the Alpine driver. Dirk's retired from the session. What on earth has happened there? I have no idea. Goodness me. Well then. Dirk already saying, yep, that's me done at Saudi Arabia. I don't want to do any more. Do I blame him? Well, probably not, to be honest with you. Ferrari and co. into the pits. Who is actually on a the lap then? The answer is there's a giraffe on a lap. There's a giraffe on a lap and a Daniel on a lap. Damn, Daniel. Through into sector three you go. And that was very nice indeed. The car hooking up very nicely. The aerodynamics complying crisply indeed with the bitumen beneath it. DRS wide open. Sucking up sumptuous fresh air. Late as you dare into that corner. Pinching it in for a late apex. Keeping it very close to the wall. And up towards the line. What's it going to be for the Alfa Romeo driver? It's P9. Not bad at all from Mr. Gilligan. The lone Alfa Romeo as Raiden has decided not to partake in race number two. But still a very nice lap time from Daniel Gilligan so far. Four drivers yet to set a lap in this session then. Ferrari, Aston Martin, McLaren and Alfa Tari. Buck 57, though. Didn't have the best of fortunes in Bahrain, but in Jeddah, 1 minute 27.6. That's firmly put him on the right track. Fantastic stuff. Had a skill issue last qualifying. No such problems here in Jeddah, where it's probably its most crucial. Here comes Maximus then. Let's ride on board. Let's have our first onboard lap without me shouting over it. On board with the Ferrari. Turn up the noise. Let's go. Well, there you go then. Fastest sector two out of anyone for Thorson. Across the line he goes, and it's only P10 somehow. Only P10, a woman at 29.1, although I think I know where most of that time is, and the answer is in the first sector. Second sector was fastest out of anyone for the Ferrari driver, but plenty of time to find 
He has nine minutes to do it though, so not all is lost. Magico and a bunch of others then. On outlaps. Big Sam as well. Here's Milo. Looking to find his way round this Jeddah Cornish circuit. I don't know why they've named it after a pasty, but there you go. Each to their own. Each to their own. Through the left-hander then. Car hugging the inside wall like his favourite grandma. On the curbs there. Nothing too overly audacious or overzealous. He's just keeping it within the confines. And that's all he needs to do for a first lap at this track. A best sector one. That's what he has to show for it. By just keeping it all together and keeping the momentum flowing. A Red Bull of Big Sam on a lap. FRS Elliott on a lap. Alpha Tauri. The Nassis on a lap. Stark on his outlap. Both Red Bulls now starting lap times. And Aston Martin as well. There he is. Stark just beginning his lap. Milo through sector two then. Over the split he goes. What's it looking like? The answer is it's purple again. Two purples. Buck 57 currently holds supremacy by nearly three tenths of a second. But Milo is looking to topple the tower in that regard. There's an Alpha Tauri on pole position in Bahrain. It looks to be McLaren mounting a challenge at the front in this qualifying session. A bit squirrely on the exit, but my goodness me, he's kept his tail in check. DRS open across the line, and it's not pole position. 28.2, somehow, despite having two purple sectors in this session, is six tenths off buck 57. I don't know where all that time's gone, but Red Bull across the line next. I think it was Big Sam. He's close, but not close enough. We now wait anxiously for Fanassi's lap time. Can he even topple his teammate? He's on mediums. If he topples his teammate on the mediums, then he really has done something right. But it looks like he's actually aiming for the pit lane. Was looking like he was aiming for the pit lane across the line. P7, and he was on mediums. It's a mockery. It's a disgrace. Elliot in the pit lane, meanwhile. Af Alfa Romeo over the line. Daniel Gilligan for another flying lap in this session. Magico will cross the line. And it's P13. Nice little lap there, overthrowing Guardian and Dirk and his teammate. Just to promote himself a couple of positions in this qualifying scrap. Up the field, meanwhile, goes Stark into P10 with a woman at 29.001. Very unsatisfying. I was hoping it was the full complement of triple zero, but unfortunately not. Let's see who else mounts the challenge. Buck 20 goes fastest. Hello. I was waiting for him to arrive on the scene, and he has done so. Just overpowering his Buck counterpart. The Buck's bringing the fizz, and it's only 44 thousandths between them. Core blimey. Slam then starting an outlap. Miller will be heading for the pit lane. Slam actually starting a lap right now, as a matter of fact. It's Giraffe. No. Giraffe's got no nose. How on earth does he smell? Well, he wouldn't know because he doesn't have a nose. Anyway, back to the real meat of the horse then. Thanasi heading for the pit lane. Alfa Romeo, meanwhile, is not heading for the pit lane. Although I suspect he is because his battery has decided to remain stagnant. Five minutes to go in this session. You'd think he'd pull into the pits to start another lap. And he is indeed. He's getting another set of boots on the car. Fresh set. A nice clean sheen. And he'll be well on his way. The yellow flag there for a McLaren. What on earth's gone on there? The answer is nothing much. Buck 20 just going a bit slowly. Could have been another front wing issue. I was hoping it wasn't. Giraffe though, absolutely flying still without a front wing. And I don't know if that... I don't know if it's the wisest thing to do. I've seen this before. And I know how it normally ends. Through the final corner... Please don't. Almost. <laughs> he almost did it. Does he go for the overtake into the pit lane? Oh! Giraffe goes for the move and gets it done. It's a cheeky move just to gain a few seconds. But he's made it pay off. Anyway, while I've been talking, Slam's actually gone up into P6. Great stuff there from the Mercedes driver. Just a few hundredths of a second ahead of his teammate. For Mercedes holding down that mid mid part of the top 10 very nicely indeed 6th and 7th so far Elliot though what can he do the answer is he's invalidated his lap so far but I believe he's on an outlap anyway so it doesn't even matter
King Didi also on an outlap. Only a couple of drivers decided to go for an outlap. Maximus could well be on a lap. And he is. Set the best second sector on his first lap. The number three sending it like Rick Bobby. Into the final corner. That looked electrically quick. Goodness me, how much speed did he take into there? But he's also phasing through space-time continuum, which I think is illegal. But across the line, P6. There we go. That's more like it from the Ferrari driver. Really now finding his feet. Throwing himself firmly up the order. Ferrari 3 and 6 currently. Shout out to the hero of qualifying for me so far. Terziak. Unsung hero. P4 in this qualifying session so far. Absolutely relishing the challenge. Number three on Giraffe's car as well. So hang on, who takes Rick Bobby ownership? Because Maximus is number three as well. Interesting. There is an imposter among us. Elliot going slowly, meanwhile. I presume he's doing another cooldown lap before he gets going. And I'm pretty sure I'm right. Most drivers, though... Soon to come out of the pit lane to start their final warm-up laps and final flying laps of this session. Three minutes to go here in Jeddah. As we see, I believe to be an Alpine heading out of the pits. And it's Terziak. There he is, my unsung hero. P4 currently. Done a fantastic job so far. And continuing, looking to continue his magnificent progress. Track evolution, of course, ramping up all the time. Getting grippier and grippier out there, which means your confidence will be more and more because you get actually feel the car turning in more and more. But the question is, when do you get too confident? When do you actually over-push the limits, overreach yourself? You just overextend that little bit too much, and that is the difference between potentially a pole position and clarting it into the barrier. Let's see then. Elliot on a lap. There he is. He's using battery. I was going to say, I didn't think he was using battery for a second, but I think he is. Let's see. Doesn't look like he is. I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. He is really going for it, though. Almost hits the wall. Jesus Christ. That was millimetres away from a shaving of the front wing, but in this case, lucky to avoid it. King Didi, but King Didi behind him also on a flying lap. Let's just begun it in the Haas. And he's slowing down rapidly, so never mind. He has one minute and 11 seconds to get round, though, so he's got to get a move on if he wants to set a lap in this session. Western Asia on track. Just round there. They could have timed this very wrong, can I just say. They've got to be extremely careful here in terms of how much time they've actually used. How much time is actually left here? 51 seconds. Thanasi might not actually make it to the line here. I'm watching the time patiently. He probably will now. I've said that. Stark has retired from the session. Meanwhile, into the pit lane. He's decided that's enough. Not today. J-Lane, meanwhile, just started a lap in the Ferrari. Through he goes, absolutely sending it around this first section of corners. Hopefully the Aston Martin of Guardian will get out of the way. And does indeed. Good stuff from Guardian. Got plenty of time before the next car arrives. Into the left hand up. Will he pinch it into the apex? Jay Lane staying firmly in his lane. Absolutely, you bet he is. And using plenty of that wash on the outside to then gain the traction up and the momentum again. The aerodynamics sucking the car to the ground and quickly unloading again through the right hand up. Always a bit of a tricky one to judge the breaking point for. You've just got to have that confidence, which you find lap after lap after lap in this qualifying session. Let's have a look on the left. You see many sponsors. That's not interesting. Into the left hand up. Best sector two of the session. J Lane's really going for it. Almost losing it as he hits the curb through that section, but luckily keeps it all together. Qualifying is done for one, two, three, four drivers. Thanasi did manage to make it over the line in the end, which is just a. Of course he did, because I was, I'm was i just always wrong in that regard. But anyway, J-Lane to the line. DRS wide open. Keeping it as short of a run as possible. 
And it's not that much of an improvement. It's only a tenth, really, up for the Ferrari driver. And now we wait and see what everyone else does. Guardian doesn't decide to try and improve his time. What's actually Terziak going to do? The answer is he does improve into the 27s, but it's not enough to claim pole position. We wait for the lone Alfa Romeo. The voice goes up to P10. He'll be screaming for joy. Briefly. We'll see what everyone else does. Who's next on the agenda? Buck 57 does reclaim pole position, albeit... Almost very briefly, Milo's right on it. Across the line goes a Williams. Buck 20 doesn't complete his lap. Actually crashes into the wall. That's not ideal. Thanasi, though, will be the final man to cross the line. Can he get pole? No, he doesn't. P5 for Thanasi. Not really even close. Four temps between himself and pole position. One Alpha Tauri got it last time. But the other one usurps his teammate in Jeddah. Buck 57 wins out the Bucks fizz. Has the most fizz of all the Bucks. Claims P1 and coincidentally, in the last three digits of his gamer tag, his time also matches. Imagine that. Well, there you go then. P1 for an Alpha Tari, but perhaps not the one you might have expected. Buck 57 claims pole position, a second pole position in a row for the AlphaTauri team, the first for him in Season 2 on F123. We then have Milo and Buck 20. You can't get rid of them from second and third. There you go, then. Two and three for the McLarens. J-Lane in fourth. The Nassi in fifth. Surely, after all you've seen of him, you would have thought it's an easy dub pole position, but no, not all set in stone. Terziak six. Tag Marta made it up to P7 in the end. I didn't even see that. Great job from him. The Irish Connection, P8 and 9 with Elliot in 10th. Then it's Daniel Gilligan, King Didi, Stark, Magico, Guardian, Giraffe, Dirk and Big Sam rounds off the grid. Well, let the chaos begin. Stark says it turns out doing a 12k walk around the Lake District is uh, not a good warm-up for racing. Well, well... It gets it gets your legs warmed up. Perhaps maybe a bit too much overexertion. Perhaps more than you might have bargained for. But it does warm them up a tiny bit. Although it was 12k. But on the other side of the coin, walking around the Lake District is very fun. And very nice. They feel like they're made entirely out of French bread. Not specific, but you know what, to be fair, it's probably what they're equivalent to, let's be honest. So start driving with two baguettes on either leg. It's perhaps not the greatest for having pedal feeling. By the way, if you're wondering why we don't have formation apps on, they're still bugged. They are still absolutely goosed on this game. Like I said, you th they say they fixed them, and then they don't fix them. I, like, what do I do? Anyway, Jenna, chaos the first year we were here in 2021 for, well, all the wrong reasons. Also, to this day, for the moment, Sir Lewis Hamilton's last win in Formula 1, or most recent win in Formula 1, his 103rd Grand Prix win, which is just stratospheric, isn't it? Verstappen, though, quickly catching it up, although with more races in a season, equally, not much of a surprise, in a way. And Red Bull have built a world beater. Who will be on top of the world today, though? Five red lights. Lights out, and away we go. And Buck57 does manage to get a decent start. But Milo on the soft is going to swap him into turn number one briefly. Although the momentum on the outside in the Alpha Tauri man's favour, keeping that pole position, and does stay P1. Great stuff there. Fantastic start. Buck57 keeps first. Then Milo and Buck20, J Lane, the Nassi P5. Alpine 6th and 7th, Maximus in 8th, Slam in 9th, Daniel up to 10th, Elliot's falling down the order as he's overtaken by Stark in the Aston Martin. The rest of the grid line astern. stern then, no drama at all coming out here, although Milo looking for a move straight away. The outside line is possible around this corner if you're feeling brave enough. Unfortunately, your testicles need to be made of tungsten to make that move, and in this case, Milo's were not. Daniel Gilligan's falling down. What earth's happened there? Gilligan's got no front wing. That's the answer to that question. I was wondering why he had issues. He's got no nasal issues, to be honest with you. Virtual safety car immediately deployed then. And the grid line astern and processing their way up. Here already on lap number one. 
and breathe. For just a moment, anyway. Nothing much to talk about. Stark up into B10, meanwhile, despite having two brioches on his legs. Respect. Virtual safety car. Looked like it would be ending soon. Stark getting very racy with Maximus. Trying to make the most of any advantage on the time delta he can gain. Perhaps you back it off slightly into this corner. Go for a wider line. Get the momentum. The answer is there's no time to do that. Because the virtual safety car has already ended. Rather unfortunately if your name's Daniel Gilligan. But away they go. Into the pits though. Comes Maximus. And I can only assume he too has had nasal issues. Doesn't look like it visually. But Ferrari say yes there is. Although Ferrari have needed guide dogs for a very long time. Buck, tw bu Buck 20, sorry, Buck 57 then in the lead. It's Buck 20 though that's been goosed by J-Lane. The battle of the Bucks and Buck 20 on the mediums as well as Thanasi goes for the move and gets past. Easy money and that's why. Because a wing end plate is missing on the left of that McLaren. Once again then, not going the way of Buck 20. Tagmata and Terziak now all over the back of him. They have to be very careful indeed because of the, the lower speed that Buck 20 is going to have to take. The outside line's calling and brave as you like, Tag Marta up into P5. Great stuff there. Buck 20 will not give this up. Even with front wing damage, he won't give this up. But it would be wiser to just linger behind and not ruin your race more than perhaps it already might be. Although going wide there was not part of the script. Terziak round the outside and Alpine now up to 5th and 6th place. Buck 57, though, not hanging around for anyone. Straight away, the gap 1.8 seconds. Was 1.8 seconds, now 1.7. But he's not hanging around for anyone on his medium tyres. 1 minute 30.6, fastest lap of the race for the Alpha Tauri driver. Slam, meanwhile, gets past his teammate Elliot for a brief moment. Still side by side between the two, though. On board with Slam, Elliot breaks so much later. Confidence in spades for the Mercedes driver and continues on his merry way. Buck 20, though, does come into the pits and there's a whole host of cars at the back of the field. That could get very, very tasty indeed. Thanasi, though, not liking Jeddah whatsoever currently, as it turns out. No idea why. He's been so quick at almost every single track, but perhaps this is a track where he's at his most vulnerable. Tag Martyr's had an accident. No. What on earth's happened there? I have to find out. He's in the wall. You can see him on the right. Tagmata has met up with Barry R and had a very, very big snog. And Barry R said, no, thank you, sir. A big smack across the front and wheel off, front wing off. Voldemort will welcome him with open arms. Unfortunately, it was only three quarters of a pirouette as well. So it's only going to be a two from the judges on Strictly. But my goodness, it has all happened already. Here on lap number one. And Buck57 was a, having a comfortable lead. But actually, that's not looking very comfortable. J-Lane firmly in the slipstream then. And he smells blood in the water. He's got a car colour to prove it as well. Putting all the pressure on. Tag Martha leads the session. And, uh, well, I don't blame him, to be honest with you. Elliot down the inside in that Mercedes car. I told you I had confidence on the brakes. And he continues employing that confidence as he sweeps past the Alpine. Although... A rejigging of DRS. J-Lane takes the lead, meanwhile. And Thanasi's lost out to Milo. My goodness me, it's all happening up at the front as well. As I'm watching all of this happen, the teammates are going at it again. Dirk and Giraffe going head-to-head. -head, and Big Sam possibly going for a move, thinking about it. Fainting one to the inside. Showing the nose, saying hello. But no, not today. Maximus, though, gets past Buck 20 into the final complex. Albeit for a very, very brief moment. A battle of the hard-ons here. DRS open for Buck 20. And you would imagine he reclaims this position to the inside line. Tr thought about dummying him, actually, but doesn't actually go for the move. Rather surprisingly, does not send it like the man with the number three on his car. Stays in P16. Here's the story at the front, then. A four-car set of affairs. J-Lane, Buck 57, Milo and Thanasi. All within each other's DRS ranges. And all pulling each other away from Elliot behind currently. Who has Terziak for company. If they start working together actually. It could get very very good. For these two. Elliot goes a bit wide meanwhile. Not part of his script. And DRS will be open once again here. 
That's literally the only phrase I can be bothered to say around Jeddah. Buck 57 going for a move, actually faking it out, and will get a monstrous exit. Absolutely, mo really monstrous exit. My goodness me, DRS wide open. But oh, here comes Milo out of nowhere. It could be three wide into turn number one. Milo on the inside. J Lane's got front row seats. Buck 57 break as late as you dare, but J Lane storms up the inside for a brief moment. But Milo with the inside line for the next corner will keep that position. Thanasi to the outside won't make that position. You have to be really, really brave. You have to have a testicle as well, as big as a wheelbarrow, to be honest with you, to make that kind of move. Not doing there. Thanasi knows that this is not the time. It's about picking your battles just as much as executing your battles in this Blackout Racing series. Elliot, meanwhile, with a compromised momentum on Thanasi. Oh, no! King Didi's had a problem as well now. What on earth's gone on there? My computer's had a skill issue. The answer is he's probably crashed. Oh, no. Towards the end of that first sector complex, we have a safety car. My goodness. Well, then. There you go. Buck 57 has the lead for the moment, but now things get very interesting. I imagine most of the grid will want to pit onto the hards for the rest of this race. Perhaps if you're at the back of the field, you actually want to go for a set of mediums now, because of course they're all on the hard tyres. Big Sam in 16th, Guardian in 17th. Looked like a decent sheen on Guardian's tyres, he definitely came into the pits. Let's see what everyone's tyre life is there for, to really ascertain what is going on. There we go. Four laps for most of the grid. Big Sam and Guardian indeed just pitted onto a fresh set of boots. And here come the leaders into the pit lane. Thanasi will come in as well. And actually it's backed off quite a bit in order to try and get a suitable gap to get ahead of his competitors. Clean pit stop for J Lane. I believe it is actually for the most part. The McLaren of Milo still slots out ahead of him. And it won't be Thanasi actually getting ahead. Not as much as you would have thought you would. It was almost under threat from Terziak for a second there. Goodness me. Almost got usurped in the pit lane, but nothing doing there. Does keep P4 on the road. Terziak P5 stark now up into P6 with Elliot P7. Magico 8th. Dirk 9th. Was 9th. Is actually slammed. That's up to 9th with Dirk 10th and Giraffe in 11th. King Didi has left the session as well. I can't say I'm surprised because I'm not. Maximus trying to get ahead of both Williams' cars, but the way the pit lane spits the cars out, Dirk at least has got ahead. Up into B10, Maximus has to settle for 11th place for the moment. There you go then. Safety car out. We wait for the rest of the grid to form up, to bunch up behind, and then we can get underway with racing once again here at Jeddah. Like I said, a circuit that's faced chaos, especially in its first year, where Bottas had yet another drag race to the line to claim a podium in his Formula 1 career at Mercedes where Hamilton beat Max Verstappen in what was rather dubious circumstances if your name was Max Verstappen Michael Massey completely losing control of that race trying to get a compromise from Red Bull despite being the race director so his call goes and before anyone starts blaming Red Bull for, for, for what's the word? Not manipulating, because that's the wrong word. For changing the course of the results in the championship. Don't blame them. Blame the FIA, because they had no spine. And they let the drivers get away with murder, quite frankly. Welcome to the Blackout Racing League, if you've just joined us. A league racing series where there is clean racing at every turn and there is no drama whatsoever. Unlike certain other league racing series that I won't comment on. It's also a league racing firm where you just won't you just won't shunt into the back of someone or decide to completely push someone off into the next dimension. Because we're respectable. I must also say, by the way, this is a community league, to be quite clear. The primary aim here is to have fun. Most importantly. Have fun race fair and have a damn good time while doing it and I have a great time commentating it and that's all that really matters Guardian into the bits once again to change onto a fresh set of nice slicked up boots 
wouldn't be wet. That'll be weird. The answer is he does go onto mediums, and I was waiting for someone to do this, actually. One of the hard runners to come in, fit on the mediums, because they will catch up. There's no way they don't catch up. They will catch up to the pack, as the anti-aliasing on my game has a skill issue. A brief moment of onboard aliens, as Guardian exits the pit lane on a fresh, brand spanking new set of medium tyres. So then, an update on the progress of the field so far. Well, we have Buck57, P1, Milo P2, J-Lane P3. Buck57 to teammate Thanasi, who won last race in P4 at the moment. Terziak, the only soft runner in P5, with Stark 6th, Elliot in 7th, Magico 8th, Slam 9th, Dirk, rounding out your top 10 so far. Like I said, I said Guardian was going to get into the, into the back of the pack very soon. The answer is he hardly even needed one sector to do it. It's right on the back of them. And so it goes. And so it goes. Jeddah on the F1 game, a very satisfying track when you get it right. Very unsatisfying when you get it wrong. Like probably most F1 tracks, to be honest with you. Great. Also, not only a track, but a region that's not without its fair share of controversy. Human rights issues are rife in Saudi Arabia not caring really about the equality for women and also the fact that there were missile strikes near the track in 2022 and there was apparently a clause in the contract or a clause in the contract or something where apparently they could be held hostage by the Saudi Arabian government so why would you race there if that was literally something that could happen but anyway enough of that enough of politics Buck 57 has decided to send the rest of the field to the shops or at least try to he pulls the trigger early but Milo firmly in the slipstream could be a threat here to the inside line he pulls tries to break as late as he dares Buck 57 goes a bit wide if Milo plays his cards right could be a switch back on but can't pull the ace of spades out of his hand just yet it's actually Terziak on the move and Thanasi on those hard tyres those soft biting into the Mitchum it's straight away up into P4 for the Alpine driver fantastic stuff one might have egg all over their face. This one is having the full scramble, fry and boil and poached all in the same dish. And it's relishing it. Buck 57 then, your leader. Milo in second, J-Lane in third, piling on the pressure. And then it's Terziak in fourth. Brilliant stuff. And looking to make even more progress. Look how those softs are immediately fired up. Stark all over the back of Thanasi now who's not got those tyres up into this operating window or is just not gelling with the Saudi Arabian track. Slipstream being as effective as it is, Stark has a big chance of getting past Thanasi here and he's going to go for it. The Aston Martin driver straight away trying to make a move on Thanasi and does make the move up into P5. He might have done a 12k walk around the Lake District, but he's certainly not showing his tired side. He's absolutely on fire here. And up into P5, Thanasi will not give this up though. It will be a battle of minds here. Into the hairpin, not going for the move. It's Slam actually that goes for the move on Magico and gets it done on his medium tyres. Although, be warned, those hards will come into effect probably sooner rather than later. You would think anyway. Buck 20 meanwhile, five lap old hards and 2.7 seconds behind Dirk. That was not part of the script at all. Anxiously awaiting to see what Guardian's progress might be like, of course. Has one lap fresher tyres than anyone else in the field currently. So that could get very interesting indeed. Stark, meanwhile, through sector one, just holding up Thanasi. It's brought Elliot into the fray as well. All aboard the Stark train. We've seen this one many times. First class cuisine and first class accommodation. What's on the menu today, you might be asking? Well, I've heard they've got some Caribbean cuisine. Isn't that cool? So if you like seafood... Eat, eat with your mouth closed because that's disgusting but if you like food that comes from the salty water uh, you will like the cuisine on Stark's Mobile on the Stark Mobile Stark's Mobile doesn't make sense Buck 57 then just keeping a bit of a comfortable gap which is good news for him who isn't keeping a comfortable gap the answer is Milo J-Lane all over the back of him or at least trying to make something happen two temps behind and Slipstream will be used. Elliot's got past the Nassi, meanwhile. What on earth is going on with the Nassi this race? On top of the world, last time out. Elliot's going for the move on Stark. The Nassi will try and follow him through. In fact, make it three wide into the last corner. At least try to briefly. But nothing doing there. 
Chelsea have won a game. I'm so happy. Yes. Anyway, enough about football. My God. Oh, my God. It was free wide into turn number one. J-Lane and Milo side by side. J-Lane giving Milo the big old squeeze. Milo won't give this up, though. That gap almost closed all the way. And that could have been an almighty collision. But just keeping it all together. And so it goes. Elliot, meanwhile, does keep ahead of Thanasi. The gap two temps. But let's see what these three will get up to. The answer is Stark just beginning to fall away a tiny bit initially. But regaining his momentum as the sector goes on. It's the battle for eighth, though. I said those hards would hopefully come into it sooner rather than later. In the case of if you're Magico and others. If you're mediums, you'll be hoping they just don't. Terziak, meanwhile, going for the move on Milo. Soft still working pretty well, then. Nothing to see here. But it will be the outside for the next set of corners. Has to be astronomically careful not to make contact. The answer is he doesn't have to be careful because he usurps Milo. I've used that word so many times. Let's say another word. He's ran rings around the McLaren, man. Fantastic. Alpine in P3 now. One of the highlights for Alpine last season was when Vulcan got the win in the sprint race at Silverstone. Drove a commanding lights to flag victory from reverse grid pole. Took the lead and basically never looked back in his case. It was a great drive from the Alpine man. Hopefully we'll see him again next week for more blackout racing. I'll tell you who's someone who is on the move though. Again, it's actually Dirk and Slam going head to head. Dirk was on the inside. Momentum was in the favour of the Mercedes man. But Dirk will deploy the DRS. Exact the ERS. And doesn't even need it, to be honest with you. As he surges past. And into P8. And P9 could soon belong to Magico. Although Slam on the brakes. Extremely confident. And does just keep that position. And breathe for just a little while anyway. Buck 57 keeping it relatively commanding. At the front, seven temps between himself and J-Lane. Terziak still keeping within the coattails of J-Lane. Significantly within them actually. Milo also in the hunt. And Thanasi just slowly, slowly but surely chipping away at these lot. Still quite a way to go in this race by the way. Seven laps. Six and a half technically in this race. Thanasi, as he catches them, actually, Elliot is keeping up with him brilliantly and is actually pulling himself into this battle as well. We could potentially see seven cars in the fight for P1 in this race. And I am here, I'm all here for it, to be honest with you, as J-Lane could be the next man to give Buck 57 a mincing. Let's see what he does. Is it Casserole Crusade for the Ferrari favourite? The answer is round the outside, DRS wide open. Buck 57 doesn't fight it hard because he will have DRS next. But look who's waiting in the wings. Terziak once again right under the diffuser of the Alpha Tauri. Has battery to play with. Jalen will try and defend. Terziak will use the inside line. Break as late as you dare. Three wide into turn one. You don't want to do that. And Buck 57, it almost cost him. Somehow gets out of that in P1 briefly. But there's Terziak on the soft tyres. And into the lead for the first time this evening. The Alpine driver takes P1. An incredible set of moves, almost ending in tears, but just, they all kept it together. And you love to see that. Fantastic stuff. And all they're battling now, you know what that's been. Here's the Nassi, here's Elliot, and here's Stark. Seven cars in the fight for P1 in this race. And I am so here for it. Terziak actually beginning to escape a little bit on those softs. Six laps old, same age as those hards, but finding the traction in space. j lanes the one on the move and actually found a gap on Buck 57. Will have DRS, both of them will. So it's not all set in stone for Terziak, but they will be side by side. Buck 57 just managing to keep ahead. Thanasi gets past Milo in the background, meanwhile. Can he keep the momentum, though? That's the ultimate question. There's so much going on on the screen at once, I can hardly even think. Dirk's trying to make moves as well. Meanwhile, it's Milo getting back past Danassi is the big story. Terziak, Daniel Gilligan's got a three-second penalty for uh, cutting the track like cake. Dirk up into P8 thanks to DRS. And Magico does get past Slam briefly, but for how long? Slam down the inside again with his breaking prowess. And oh my god, three wide into turn one again. It's going to get very ugly very quickly, possibly. Terziak does keep ahead. J-Lane almost goes completely off the track. Thanasi has to wait in the wings very, very patiently indeed because that could end all in abs just absolute tears. 
Buck 57 though, down into B4. Thanasi still keeping a watching brief in P5 and Elliot and Stark are licking their lips like a hungry hippo in case any of these drivers makes one catastrophic failure. Big hitters towards the end of this race then. Don't discount Buck 57, Thanasi or Stark. Oh no, something's happened. Dirk's in the wall. He has no nose and it's all gone horribly for the Williams driver. I would give you a nose pun today as we did however many weeks ago at the penultimate week of season one. But I don't nose any. And that's really unfortunate. It's a full safety car. Okay, that makes things very interesting then. So Terziak actually. This plays out brilliantly for him because of course soft tyres, they will start to go off. They have to start going off. I mean, they've got the highest attrition of all of them on the grid, stupid. But the point is that he'll be able to save them, conserve them for a few laps. Just a little bit more. And then he'll be able to pile down the power and put out the pace when he needs to. And in fact, into the pits comes Terziak. Here we go then. This is where it gets interesting. In fact, loads of drivers into the pits. My goodness me, everyone into the pits. What on earth's gone on there? Another set of softs for Terziak then. And straight out of the pits and into a perfect gap. Terziak will keep the lead in this race. Another penalty for Mr. Gilligan. The voice has turned into a whimper as he has another penalty for this time speeding in the pit lane. Eight seconds of penalties cumulatively, unless he serves it in his pit box, in which case he still has the three from before. Buck 57 into P2. Elliott's now up into P3. Stark P4. Milo P5. J lane sixth. Thanasi down to seventh. Slam Magico. Buck 20 now up into P10. Maximus in P11. Daniel in 12, although it's all chock-a-block in the pit lane. It's like the Tesco car park on pretty much any day of the week. But there we go. Line the stern behind the safety car once again then. Race neutralised. And it's all thanks to Dirk having no nose. Nobody knows how the rest of this race will go meanwhile. Maybe it's a sinus of the times. Who knows? the dawn of a new era an era where Alpine take the main race win it could be possible never say never this man is in the prime position to be able to do so kept his softs going kept his battles to a minimum only did it when he absolutely needed to and made the most of his opportunities and that's why he's in this position now had the perfect gap to slot in out of the pit box as well. It's all gone Terziak's way so far. The gods are looking down on him very favourably indeed. But he's got some very, very, very hungry drivers for that win. For higher positions, for the maximum points in this race. Don't count out any of the drivers in this Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Because you never know what could happen. Anything can happen in Formula 1. And it usually does. Meanwhile, at the other end of the scope, here's Giraffe. Stuck his neck out this race. Hasn't quite gone his way so far. But we still have a few laps of racing to go yet. At least one more lap of those, though, will be under the safety car. So then, here are the big winners then in this race. The big winners and big losers. If your name's Terziak, Elliot and Stark, you're laughing, mate. Stark especially with a 12k walk. You've gained nine of those 12 kilometers back based on your starting position. Absolutely laughing. Elliot with seven places up once again, doing the goods in the race. Terziak, like I said, being opportunistic where he needed to be, but not being overzealous where he didn't need to be. Just played it to perfection. Like I said, that's why he's managed to keep control and keep it in P1 for the moment. Magico as well, up five positions. Kudos to you, my friend. Dirk up four positions. Guardian up one and Big Sam up three. Unfortunately, the big loser of this race, big losers. One, buck 20. Seven places down from where he started in P3 after front wing damage earlier in the race. 
and heartbreakingly for Tag Marta, who qualified so well, was racing very well, and then unfortunately it all fell apart when he met Barriar, who gave him, uh, gave him a snog and then dumped him on the spot. It's the heartbreak story of Formula One, really, Barriar. Now we have to have words with him. Here's a question for you all watching whilst we're under this safety car. And my question to you is, what is the best F1 game ever made to this day? What is the best one ever made? Because I think, I think realistically, there are two contenders for the best ever F1 game. And those are, quite obviously, F1 2013 and, I believe, F1 2020. I think those two are in the running for the best F1 game. But I'm all up for your options and your opinions. So do let me know, in any case, what you think the best F1 game by Codemasters ever is. Terziak not wasting any time then in trying to keep up with the safety car. The safety car's not even gone in the pit lane. And he's properly rocketed along. Just weaving now, controlling the pack. Slowly but surely. Waiting for the prime moment. And he goes for it. Here we go then. Racing at Jeddah. We have three more laps of racing. And he does manage to keep the lead. And it's all going to be absolute mayhem behind. McLaren of Milo with Thanasi on the inside. as a bit robust. That was not... Ex that, it's, it's on the edge, let's be honest. But unfortunately, it doesn't make up the position anyway. So, God does no calm. Oh, no. Milo out of the race. Goodness me. Immediate crash and carnage. The McLaren man doesn't keep it together. And what could have been so much better for Milo falls into despair. Terziak does keep the lead meanwhile. Buck, oh, sorry, Buck 57 in P2, my apologies. Elliot in P3, Zeus in P4. With the world on his shoulders. Hopefully he can put a godlike performance in in these last three laps. J-Lane P5, Stark P6. Oh no! Zeus with a five-second penalty for corner-cutting and gaining a position. Naughty boy. Hasn't quite gone the way of the world champion from season number one on F1 23. Terziak, meanwhile, is wasting no time at all in trying to escape outside of a second of buck 57. Keeping the gap at seven tenths, and that's all he needs to do currently. Remember, there's two laps without DRS, so if he can get outside of a second for that DRS lap, he might just have a fighting chance of winning this race in convincing fashion as well. Jalen was right on the back of Thanasi, meanwhile, for a brief moment in the slipstream again. Not deploying the battery hugely here. You have to be very wise about when you deploy your battery. Let's see what everyone's on. Buck 57 has a lot of battery. Terziak, not so much, but the slipstream, like I said, so powerful. Elliot also with a significant amount of battery. Thanasi, not with a significant amount of battery, though. As Daniel Gilligan, here he is. He's announced himself on the medium tyres, up into P10 Egos. It's all happening here. Magico trying to find an avenue past Slam. The second Mercedes driver then has got a train. All aboard the Slammer Jam is all I'm trying to say. Oh, Buck 57 goes through into the lead. The pole sitter takes back first position. And it could well be a crafty move from Terziak as well. If he didn't plan it, he probably was wishing he did plan it. And he has planned it now, so there you go. Because he now has Slipstream in his favour. Buck 57 then deploying the battery, trying to get away. Eight tenths the gap. He is actually doing that. My goodness me, he's flying away. What on earth? Buck 57 using Nitrous there. And is outside of a second. Terziak doing everything he can to try and stay within it. Daniel Gilligan again with multiple warnings, penalties. That is not ideal at all. 1.2 seconds between Terziak and the lead of the race. And Buck57 just trying to scamper away a little bit. Could entirely be possible as well that Terziak does have a higher downfall setup. Although I think I know why Buck57 was scampering away. It's because the Energizer Bunny is now dead. That's why. Hardly any battery left to show for it. And it's got to be played out very cautiously now. Oh, no! J-Lane! No way! Into the wall on the left, and his left front sheared off. What on earth happened there? Dirk's gone as well. What on earth has gone on between those two? Another wheel sheared off. Guardian, do be careful. He's got a front wing missing, meanwhile. Carnage going on. What on earth happened there? 
I don't believe it. Absolute craziness. Slam, meanwhile, still has a train. Terziak within seven temps. Elliot has actually dropped well outside of the RS range. It's between Terziak and Bug57 for the win of this race. We're going to have a new winner in Jeddah then, at least while I'm commentating it. Battery stipulations. There's more battery for Terziak. First outing of DRS then. Eight temps currently the gap. Going down all the time. Six temps now the gap. There's a little bit more battery to play with, although that corner was not what he would have called ideal, let's be honest. Thanasi, meanwhile, behind will be the one making the move, trying to get a podium from Elliot. Has got a penalty, of course. With the RS, Elliot will surely defend the inside. Thanasi flicks to the outside at the last minute. It'll be a drag race to the line. But one man, a new winner while I'm commentating. Buck 57. What a drive. What a race. Will win the drag race and wins in Saudi Arabia. Terziak P2. An incredible race from him. My unsung qualifying hero. And my unsung race hero as well in the end. Fantastic effort. Elliot claims P3. Great stuff there. Took advantage of the safety car a little bit. Managed to shuffle himself up. But he was in it and he kept it on the track where it counted. Slam in P5. Zip the Nassi down to P6 after penalties. Stark in P4. My apologies. Despite having two loaves of bread on his metatarsals. He's done it. In P4. Almost a podium despite everything. And maybe walking around the Lake District isn't such a bad warm-up after all. Giraffe gets driver of the day from the game. I must say, though, it was an absolutely enthralling race at the front. Skipping onto the podium like he belongs there. It could, it looks, it's exactly the same as Thanasi's avatar. So, you know, well done, Thanasi. You did it again. Claim ownership. There's no gamer tag on it. I'm kidding. Buck 57, great race. Absolutely incredible stuff. From the AlphaTauri driver. AlphaTauri are two for two in season two of Blackout in F1 23. Elliot makes it a woman on the podium. Fantastic news. And as for the Alpine driver of Terziak, he was so close to winning. So, so close. In the end, though, maybe one more lap and it would have been his for the taking. But still a fantastic spectacle and a fantastic race, nonetheless, from both the front two. Fantastic race from everyone, really. And Jeddah did cause carnage, just as I predicted. Buck 57, the full complement of 33 points. Well done to the Buck. Top Buck in this race. Terziak P2, Elliot P3, Stark P4. Great work from you, my friend. Slam in P5. Thanasi down to P6 in the end. Maximus 7th, Giraffe 8th, Big Sam 9th, Magico in P10. <coughs> Pardon me. Then Buck 20, Guardian, Daniel Gilligan, Dirk, J Lane, and then Milo, King DD, and Tagmata, your DNFers. Although J Lane and Dirk also did crash out in a little bit of an oopsie moment. Woo! Right. Got your breath back, everyone. <laughs> I certainly haven't. That was absolutely meteoric. No idea what on earth happened. Saudi Arabia was all a bit of a blur, really. Two 35% races in the end. On top is Alpha Tauri in both of them. On the one hand, Thanasi controlled it from start to finish, despite a couple of scares in Bahrain. So he didn't control it start to finish, but he did control it pretty well in the bits he otherwise could control. And in race two, buck 57. Fair play to you. Pole position, fastest lap by a second, which is ridiculous. So well done. That is incredible. And then Terziak fighting all the way until the bitter end. And Elliot did manage to hold on for a podium, which is great news indeed. You love to see it then. Goodness me. Two races done. Just like that. Well then. That's a big sniffle. That ends it. That concludes round number one and two. Of season two. Of Blackout. My goodness. How brilliant is that? Honestly. I'm absolutely. Absolutely. Loving this season already. A wet to dry race in Bahrain. You thought it was crazy enough. And then Jeddah did what Jeddah does. And caused mayhem. And boy. It did not disappoint. So there you go. My apologies if I don't sound like myself. I sound like I'm on a Boeing 747. Uh, you wouldn't be wrong. I've had a raving cold for the past week. Thank God this didn't start last week because I genuinely would have sounded like a nostril. So, yeah, that's that. That's all played out pretty well then, hasn't it? But, yeah, that's why if that's not really an excuse, I just do it anyway. 
Doesn't really matter. Doesn't. I don't care if I'm ill. I would do it anyway. Whether that's a bad thing for my throat or not, again, don't really care. But there you go. 19 drivers, 18 in the second race, going head-to-head, -head, hammer and tong, wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, all the way until the very, very bitter end. Kudos to Alpha Tauri. They absolutely smashed it tonight. McLaren did well in race one. And it all kind of fell apart in race two. In the end, did not go the way they would have planned it out. Although, I have no idea what the Constructors' Championship looks like. Either Alpha Tauri or McLaren are in the lead. I just can't figure out who currently. The Maffin, Maffin in my head, unfortunately. And it probably won't because it's quarter past ten at night where I am. And I've got to be up early tomorrow as well. So there you go. And that's my excuses out of the way. Meanwhile, we end off round number one and two of the Blackout Racing League. All I have to say now is thank you very, very much to Blackout once again for allowing me to commentate on this league racing series. It's a pleasure. I adore it. Like I say, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure doing it. It's always a pleasure doing it. And I wouldn't change anything with my Monday evening. And so I haven't. But there you go. I hope you've all enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Join us again next week at 8 o'clock on the dot for rounds 3 and 4 of the Blackout Racing League. I forgot to say, by the way, if you want to watch these archived and whatnot, even season one, um, they're on my YouTube channel. All of the races that I've live streamed and commentated over, they're all on there in a playlist called Commentary, I believe. So if you want to check all of them out, go and check them out. Enjoy going down memory lane and enjoy seeing the recent content. Okay, that's really all now. Bye. Love you all. Bye.